Hmm. Imagine the one channel fader pull on steroids. Bam! It's not the fader pull on steroids because that would be an inappropriate name to call it. So instead, they called it the IO Station 24C. What's up, creators? Ella on set from Creative Sound here with the Persona's IO Station 24C. Now this thing definitely has the form factor of a fader port, the small, the one channel fader port, but it is not that. This thing is probably the hybrid between the one channel fader port and the actual 16 or the 24 channel fader port. This thing is pretty remarkable. You have all of your functions. You can do everything on here, your one, your one fader here, your one knob, it push in, and all of these functions, you have user preset, right? And you can press play, stop, rewind, loop, you know, all your normal stuff, but this thing comes packed with other features, such as what we see here, we have power. We have a power switch here, turn on and off, and we have USB-C, that is remarkable. And then we have your foot switch, for your record, if you are a guitarist, you can, you know, activate that right there. Headphone jack, and then for your output, left and right for your speaker, your monitor setup. Now, who is this thing for? It will be for me. Absolutely. I'm glad you asked that question. It fits my workflow. This would be for someone that wants to stay compact in, in regards to your workstation, your area. If you have a very small area and you want something with the functionality of this thing, being able to control Studio One and whatnot, then this thing works for you in that small area. Or it does not have to be for someone in a small area. You just don't want a big mix board, but you still want the functions from here. Uh, this thing also works for you as well. I guess I will also call this the interface on steroids because it's an interface, but it has all of the functions on top of it where you can control your DAW and still be able to record audio within the thing and output your speakers, your monitors, and plug a headphone jack in this thing all in one and scroll all day and press down knobs and stuff and also not to mention this fader here it's touch sensitive yep i heard you through the video so that's why i'm showing you how this all comes together so let's get started so studio one right so say for instance Right, let's play that back. Say I wanted to undo that, hit shift. And so keep in mind when you hit shift, you have to hit shift again because everything underneath the buttons, which is solo clear, mute clear, arm, you guys know the gist, undo, redo, you have to pull up the, the picture and kind of look at all of these. You have to be careful that when you do whatever your secondary commands is that's actually printed on the device itself, you have to make sure you uncheck shift again because you can make a mistake and try to say you want to hit channel, but you got it shift activated and you accidentally hit lock. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the only thing. If you're not used to these type of of hardware, then that's that's kind of how that works. So let's try that again. Right. So I started from the beginning. Pause. Resume. Rewind. All this is really self-explanatory. Actually, I may not have been specific to the first switch Becky, but say you, for instance, you create something real simple like you see me do, and you're a guitarist, or you just want to activate the record button without actually hitting the record on here. The foot switch back here, you can plug in a foot switch and activate the record so you don't have to do that. So that it's kind of like a faster workflow, if you may. Turn up and down the volume here. Can activate the loop here on and off like that this thing is pretty cool because it, you can actually uh write to the track so like for automation purposes you can go ahead and activate the right 
and make your movements or touch you know and activate your read here so say i wanted to do that and right activate my read so it does it for you as you can see say i wanted to undo that because that's not what i normally do to volume but it's there you could do that and i believe these functions work for any parameter so as long as you touch here you can set it to whatever you want it to do but some of the other cool things that this thing do uh let's see if i was to hit channel right and just go back and forth you know what i'm saying these are things you already know that that you could do right one other cool thing i thought was very useful for my workflow is I, I'm able to lock in so you know I can like toggle between different you know channels or whatnot and activate the the volume for each whichever one I select on but there are times where I am working on one channel and I'm and I may be selected on another track right so I can just lock say for instance I locked uh okay let's say we lock this one in place this play track right say we lock that i can hit shift now when you long press on shift it makes itself unactive once you let go but when you hit it one time it's in shift the entire time so you gotta you know watch that but say i want to you know and then i can still be on or if i click you know using my mouse onto another track or whatnot say i'm over here working on this track right if I up, you know, utilize my fader here, it's still going to activate the play track here, no matter which track I'm on, which is a, a, a nice cool thing. So a lot of these buttons on here have multiple functions. It does two things at once. You know, it, it makes this thing totally multifunctional. I guess that's a better word. So I say I deactivate that and then, then I can, you know, kind of, do my thing on other tracks i can zoom in and out and if i want to like increase the height i could definitely do that really cool there i'm also able to link stuff let me hit link here now know for third party i have to actually click on the actual parameter in order for it to work but say for instance i, I pull up this this EQ, it will work. The hover feature works proprietary to Studio One. So all I gotta do is just hover over something and then it just automatically links itself. I don't have to click anything, but with third party, you actually have to click on it, right? So I'm just, just hovering over stuff and it's just doing, it, doing this thing. I, I'm not clicking anything. yeah it's just you know yeah oh i just thought about it just to clarify the foot switch and when i was showing you guys that basically the foot switch can be utilized to toggle on and off the the record button here and play and stop here and that's basically for like you know if you're a guitar bass player or even a singer for that matter if you just if you if you got a foot switch you can toggle and make this thing do things and not necessarily have to touch it and and i, and I think that that's that's probably a really great feature you can extend the control all the way down to your foots and then this feature right here is pretty cool this mute button here you can mute your studio monitors that's plugged in the back of this thing and that way you can still monitor the insert and whatever's coming out of of studio one you know cut on it off this is a feature that, that that did not come on my studio 192 mobile here it comes on the rack version but it didn't come on my unit so this is something i kind of cherish so yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure i did not go over everything but i think this is a pretty cool you know oh let me show you this oh yeah arm you can arm the like this is cool arm tracks as you go I know I can't arm effects tracks. Like, why would you even try to do that? But you know, you do it anyway. See if it work. 
and it didn't work. Now, like I say, this thing can be mapped to whatever key command that you like, but the the ones that's already pre-mapped here is F1, obviously give you your information here on the side. F2 is what allows you to go in and out of piano roll. F3 is your mixer and F4 is your browser, but you can reroute these to whatever you like. And the cool thing about this is even though it only comes with four presets, you guys do know that you can set macros inside of Studio One where you can pretty much automate functions. You can have several things doing something in what, at one click of a button. In my case, I know I have a macro button that explode to pitches and it bounces in place everything like it's two different functions like that's crazy off of one button i set that to my adam sq by the way and then of course just revisiting the this the sad strip here you got your 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 mic one mic two levels you can like click your line on, on and off say for instance again if you were a guitarist bass player you definitely will have your line level your instrument level coming in and you turn it off for your mic level whatever for your condenser mics you have 48 volt for your phantom power and then you can input your input playback here so like you can like adjust uh, adjust your mix and you know totally like zero latency issue here which is really cool and then the ability to control your headphone jack right here and then your monitor levels here and again the mute so if you're looking at this thing this thing you know if you know anything about the fader port 8 or the 16 you know that this shares the same design it's pretty much this you know in terms of the functions here it's like the operation strip this whole thing was stripped out of the fader port 8 or the 16 placed in a in a small form factor as the one knob the other fader ports but this one comes with these other features where you can record your, your mic in here and you can plug it into a speaker and that's one thing that you can't do this on any other models other than a interface. If you have an interface, you could plug in your your mic and control your your input or whatever, but you don't have all of these things that can control Studio One. So this would be like your hybrid model or your between or your your hub this is it's what it is io station it does everything you want it to do and it's just is this small like this is this is pretty amazing so yeah as you guys know i had the fader port 8 i returned it and got this instead i don't mind the one knob or the the one fader here because i usually work inside of the box anyway I just thought that an extra eight faders and that's all that's all you're getting with the the fader port eight is just eight faders of course you get like a little lcd at the top it kind of gives you further indications like your levels and whatnot i mean that's cool but again all of this is just based on your workflow what you like to do i thought i wanted the eight the the fader port eight but I, I really didn't because it was a little bigger for you know the space or whatever and i i just i found it to, to be collecting dust so i i returned it and got this one instead i think this works best for my workflow and what i'm trying to achieve is like jam pack all in one solution in this thing i could put this in my backpack yo and do my thing record vocals on the road you know what I'm saying? Plug in my headphone jack in here and still get like the functions and do crazy things to Studio One. Like I think this thing is, this is this is pretty cool. If you enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate it if you share this with all of your friends and your loved ones, or you can watch this video five times. It, I, I'll take any one of those. And don't forget to subscribe. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button. That will be Greatly appreciate it. I'm Ella from Creative Sound. Remember, music is art. You, the artist, paint your picture. Stay creative without rules.